Today's program is entitled, Public Speaking for Scientists, Making Your Data-Rich Presentation a Hit. It is my pleasure to introduce your speaker for today, Rick Parmley. With 25 plus years experience of teaching, Rick has taught science and communications courses to widely diverse audiences, including NATO officials, technicians at the UN, pesticides laboratory in Austria, and scientists at the University of Nairobi. And now let's get started. Welcome, Rick Parmley. Hello, everyone. We hope you are going to enjoy this topic this afternoon. Well, today we're going to focus on key techniques for improving the spoken word. And let's look at an overview of what we're going to talk about. Five topics. First, storytelling. Does it have a place in science? Principal investigators have told me that this does not work. We're speaking to an audience in a recognized framework at a national meeting, we really can't incorporate anything that's not normally recognized. Well, we're going to try to convince you otherwise in that section. The second section, communication basics, just takes a look at our old friend PowerPoint and some other avenues of communications basics, which will help us be better, better presenters. The third area, effective audience contact, how do we do that? As scientists, we tend to be a little sterile in our presenter audience contact. Let's see if we can make that a little warmer, and we'll give you some techniques there. Inspiring audiences fits well with effective audience contact because it gives us approaches that we might try that will help us be more inspirational and our message be more emotional for those who are listening. And that does have a place in science, especially if we're trying to get funding or trying to get support from other organizations. And finally, we'll talk about the end, words that motivate. Well, in most cases, what you say last, lasts the longest in the mind of the audience, and we want to look at those. So those will be the five topics. Let's start with the first one, storytelling, which should be... Well, today... We're introducing three revolutionary products of this class. The first one is a widescreen iPod with touch control. The second is a revolutionary mobile phone. And the third is a breakthrough internet communications device. So, three things. A widescreen iPod with touch controls, a revolutionary mobile phone, and a breakthrough internet communications device. An iPod, a phone, and an internet communicator. An iPod, a phone. Are you getting it? All right, so what did we learn from that brief story that Steve Jobs has become so well known for before his death. Well, there's a couple things. Number one, he didn't start his talk by saying, hi, I'm Steve Jobs, most of you know me because, no. He didn't swamp you with procedures, processes, or data right away, but rather he weaved some sort of story that helped engage you about the direction that he wanted you to go. He first talked about this is a day I've been waiting or looking forward to for two and a half years. It sort of sets the tone. We can do the same. In our data, we can say, this is a project that started 10 years ago with whatever that project was or whatever the background or historical setting was. That begins to weave the story. And he didn't dive into the technical details, like this is run on a certain processor at a certain speed with certain connections to certain devices. No, he didn't do that either. But what did he do? Why was it so effective? 
So let's move on to some techniques. The techniques that we want to talk about have to do a lot with presentation mechanics. And we'll, we'll quickly get through this portion because many of you are well aware of them. Here, here are five. These are kind of interesting. Minimize the number of words in our presentation. Steve Jobs did an excellent job of that. Spell check if you can. Obviously, I didn't. We're going to talk about fire some bullets, but how many. Your selection of color and font choice is important. Slide count is important. Less is actually better. Then data packing for clarity. Animate for simplicity. Pictures and points. Tables and data. And finally, we're going to end up with simplify graphs and plots. See, there's another. Use fewer bullets. Now, that's kind of hard to accept, I know, for some of us, because I worked in a research lab, too. And we wanted to get everything up there so no one could argue with the results. But fewer is better. Here's an example of not so few. Here's some bullet points in a presentation that was presented dealing with profit and loss and what we could do to improve it. Not sure we're going to get there. Here's a, here's a fewer bullets approach to that same slide. I didn't substitute an animation here, but I want you to think back to what Steve Jobs did with his animation. Sometimes animations help to simplify rather than complicate a presentation. So he said in his presentation, so three things, a widescreen iPod with touch controls, a revolutionary mobile phone, and a breakthrough internet communications device. And as he said these things, those icons were rotating across the screen. That helped to cinch up in the audience's mind that something unique was going to come out of this presentation and actually made it simpler for him. Graphs are also a problem sometimes. Leonardo da Vinci in the 15th century said, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. Sometimes our graphs are way too complicated. In fact, um, as we say this is the initial point, this is the midpoint of our discussion, this is where we are today, maybe this is the first place we want to be, and then we put a wow in there just for good measure, that may be too complex. Try to simplify things as much as possible in graph graphing data. So what are some of the best practices? Number one, don't do big lists. Inspiring our audience despite the topic involved. Maybe it's very data rich. Maybe it's very difficult to describe. Maybe it's mathematically based. And our audience aren't, just aren't mathematically inclined. What do we do? Well, number one, we want to remember that the key to anything is the heart. To be inspiring, we have to reach the heart. We say, well, there's no benefit to this. It seems like it's all exposure to me in terms of whether I'm going to be successful or not if I try to reach the heart of the audience. Well, there are some benefits. The key benefits include your audience joins your cause. Your audience might be potential funding agencies. It might be people who want to work in your group. It might be someone you work for who is going to have some influence over your career. Whatever it is, there are benefits to reaching the heart. Number two, the audience might be moved to action as a result of you being inspirational and passionate about the subject. Number three, you will accomplish your mission. And that's very, very important for any of us. Why would we be giving the presentation if we didn't want to accomplish some goal or mission? Obviously, we're not giving the presentation just because we don't have anything else to do in the lab that day but rather we have a goal or a mission. It might be to accomplish further funding. It might be to just to present our data and our progress. It might be to increase the notoriety of our organization or lab. Whatever it is, there are benefits to being truly invested emotionally in the presentation. Let's take a look at a few tips. Number one, and this is something that we often see with new presenters, do not introduce new information. Don't get to the conclusion and say, we'd like to conclude by telling you about one other experiment that we did just before we go. Well, that may be the most important experiment. And if it was, 
why didn't it end up in the body of the discussion as one of your key main points in your outline? So don't introduce new information. New information confuses the audience. It doesn't motivate them to take action. It only causes a great deal of confusion. Let's look at concluding with a purpose. So what's our purpose? Well, the purpose part is show the audience what you want them to do in your conclusion. And in all cases, show earnest conviction to give them a note of finality. That's the same thing as exuding confidence. This particular person looks very confident in her approach and the results of what data she has just presented. Show earnest conviction. Show them some of your heart again. Be inspirational in your conclusion.